Many things have been said about the opening made popular by Eric Rosen, the Stuffer Gambit. Win quickly with the Stuffer Gambit. Stuffer Gambit refuted in four easy steps. Beating everyone with the same opening trap. Trying to refute the refutation to the refutation of the Stuffer Gambit. In this video, I want to put together all this material and reply to one question. Is the Stuffer Gambit still playable in 2022? Let's see. Let's see why everyone wants to play the stuff for Gambit. After e4, e5, knight f3, black doesn't protect the pawn on e5, but counterattack the pawn on e4. But the idea is that after knight take e5, we don't capture back the pawn, but we sacrifice it. Knight c6, we want to go for a quick development. After knight takes d takes, now we reach the main point of the stuff for Gambit. And here there are so many ways where black can win so early. For example, principle, opening principle, develop the pieces, castle. So knight c3, protecting the pawn on e4. We go with bishop c5, we want to target the pawn on f2. Now for white, there is not a clear way to protect that pawn, right? So white think like, okay, let's develop the bishop and then let's be ready to castle. But here, you already have a good position for black. After knight g4, you're attacking the pawn on f2, forcing white to castle. And now we are already threatening mate after queen h4. H3 is the only move to prevent the mate. And now we have the strong bishop take f2 check. The king needs to move, all in way. And then we have queen g3. Threatening mate on h2. Uh, the knight is protected by the bishop, so only move is pawn take, which is a mate in one. We won in 10 moves. But that's not the only way where black can win so quickly in the opening. Uh, at this point, you might say, let's play a bit more solid. Let's not go with the bishop on c4, but let's rather play bishop e2. Because with this bishop, we are controlling the square on g4. But also this is not looking too well. Black plays h5, which is a very typical move, sustaining the knight to go to g4. h3 is the main move played by white, because you want to avoid the knight to go to g4. Now, after queen d4, black is forcing white to castle. To then go with the knight on g4. You are sacrificing the knight because you want to use the open h file. And this is so risky. White is taking because if you don't, f2 is hanging. And after h take g4, now black's idea is to play queen e5 and queen h2 mate. And that's so strong. Black has a way to try to defend this. g3, so that after queen e5 with the idea of playing queen h5, White plays the move king g2, and this looks, oh my god, no, white managed to protect. Because now if queen h5, there is rook h1, and we are exchanging pieces, and we are a piece down, so not good. But here, we have a very smart move. Bishop take half 2 The idea is that if king take, okay, it's mate in, uh, in very few moves, in 3, mate. And so here, white needs to take with the rook. But now we deviated this rook away from the first rank. So queen h5 is possible and we are going to give mate. Oh, if queen g1, there is queen h3 mate, important. And if not, this mate in a few moves. So as you can see, this can be so, so, so dangerous for white. Uh, let's try to change. Uh, there are two main moves here, knight c3 or d3. What happens if d3 is played by white? We always go on with bishop c5. Now we understand already all the plans. Uh, bishop on c5, knight on g4, h5 sometimes to support a knight. The queen can go on d6 or on d4, attacking. Your white plays bishop e2, preparing to castle and controlling the square on g4, trying to avoid knight on g4. That's why we play h5, supporting the knight. And after castle, hell yeah, we go with the knight on g4. And now already so many threats. The idea of queen h4 is there. Queen d6, maybe taking on f2. In many games, white played the move h3 here, attacking this knight. But after queen d6, the position is already desperate. f4 cannot be played. Bishop f4 is not bringing to anything. So white plays the move g3 to be checkmated in two moves because this pawn is pinned. The bishop is strong on c5. So this is another way for white to lose pretty quickly in the opening. What else can do white here? You might say, let's play active. Bishop on g5. We want to pin this knight. The knight is not going to get to g4. Well, uh, now we can sacrifice our queen. 
Knight take e4. You might say, what? The queen is hanging on d8. Well, take that queen. Well, bishop take f2 check. The only square for the king to go is bishop e2. And now, bang, we have checkmate. This looks like the legal mate. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but always watch out for this queen sacrifice that gives checkmate to the king so early. So if bishop g5 is not working, what else can white play here? One other option is to develop the knight on c3 and maybe try to go for a quick long castle where the king looks safer. So bishop e3, queen d2, long castle. It looks good, right? But the problem here is that you have a quick knight g4 attacking f2. And after bishop e3, well, you just capture back the pawn and now the pressure is still on. There is still ideas with uh, uh, queen h4, black has the bishop pair, black can already castle, and black is very fast in completing the development, and you just have a better position here. Now that we saw all this way for y to get in big trouble in the opening, what can y do better? Let's see. After the move d3, if white is familiar with the black plans in this position, so knight g4, h5, queen d4, might come up with two moves. One is h3 and the other is c3. The idea of h3 is to block this knight to go on g4. The idea of c3 is to play a very quick d4, trying to block the bishop on c5. Let's start with the move c3. I think it's quite appealing because the idea is really strong. If one manages to play d4 and consolidate, what is just a better position? So what can black do here? Well, you need to be precise. Black needs to be precise here. Knight take e4. This is an important sacrifice. If pawn take, you win immediately the queen. Bishop take f2, typical sacrifice. Uh, if king takes, you take the queen. If king e2, bishop g4 is winning the queen. So here, white cannot take the knight, uh, but can play queen e2, which is quite challenging because now there is not anymore the idea of winning the queen, and this knight is pinned and hanging. But now black has a very strong move. We have bishop take f2 check, the king has to move to d1, and now this pawn is pinned. This means that we can play the move f5, protecting the knight. And after king c2, now we sacrifice the knight. We just play the move castle. And after f take e4, we have lots of compensation here for black. Black is a piece down, but there are so many moves coming. Uh, bishop, f5, e3, and black gets lots of compensation here. So this is playable for white, but it's very dangerous. A very prepared player will not play this with white. So let's go to the other option, decent option, uh, that is uh, h3. This move is stopping knight g4, but it's allowing a deadly trick. Bishop take f2. And after king take f2, we go with the knight take on e4. The pawn cannot take because the queen is hanging, so now the king needs to move. Where is the king going? Well, there are many options. If king g1, you can go for a force draw, queen d4, queen e5, and you repeat the moves. Uh, if the king goes wild on f3, here you have a very strong attack. You play castle, still this knight cannot be taken by the pawn because the queen is hanging, but if king takes, the following moves leads to a very good position for black. We do queen check, the king goes back, and now we want to use the, this diagonal, queen check, and we want to win the queen. g4 is the only move, and now we have boom, bishop take g4. If everything is forced, white has to take, we take the rook with check, the king moves, and now f5. It's true that black has just one rook for one, two, three minor pieces. So if this king wouldn't be weak, this would not be enough. But in this position, this king is so bad on f2 that I can assure you, you will give mate in a few moves here. Another point is that you have really lots of pawns to compensate the material disadvantage here. So you have lots of pawns and a great attack towards this king on f2. If this would be all the theory of the stuff for Gambit, well guys, I will play this all the time. But that's not the case, because there are at least four pain points of this opening, and we're going straight into it. First pain point starts with the move d3. And after the main line, bishop c5, bishop e2, and after h5, white plays the move h3. We saw already this variation, after queen d4, we saw the move castle, but that's a bad move. Here, what y needs to play is the move rook f1. The following position is very complex. The engine says plus 2, but I would not recommend you to play this for white, and I would actually be happy to have this with black. White's idea is to now develop the pieces and castle long. To do this, c3d4 could be played to kick this queen away. The 
problem is that this is not so easy because black is also very fast in pulling moves like bishop e6, long castle, bringing the other rook to the e file. For example, let's say just a normal way to go on. Queen e5, uh, removing the queen and preparing to face the move c3 with just bishop e6. The idea now is that if d4, you will just sacrifice the piece. So you take on e4 and after pawn takes, you take even on g2. Now, this pawn is hanging, you want to play rook d8, maybe you castle short and it's not so easy for right to go on. I mean, already here it's complex. You are a piece down, but the engine is saying just plus one. So I wouldn't be happy to play this kind of position here. You really need to be careful with white. What I consider a real pain point, but white needs always to be very precise. And this is the real problem of facing the stuff for gambit. White, even if white, according to the engine, gets a very good position, the positions are always so tricky. And white needs to be very prepared. So let's go back to 5d3, which is uh, the main move. And here, after bishop c5, bishop e2, h5, one other move very strong is the move c3. This is very practical, but it's still not what I would play. This is a very strong move according to the engine, plus 3. But it's not the move that I would play with white. And it's not the move that I play with white. Now black has a very interesting try, knight g4, attacking the pawn on f2. And after d4, very natural, attacking the bishop, you have queen h4, attacking f2, g3, queen f6, keeping the attack, and now white can play the move f3. There are two pieces under attack and this looks desperate, but black can complicate everything here and play the move h4. I love this move because it's incredible, black has so pieces hanging, but this position is still so messy. F take g4, you take the pawn, now you're threatening mage on f2, and if rook f1, you already have an incredibly good position after g take h2, you are promoting basically. And so here, the best move for white is bishop e3. And after rook take h2, white needs to play the move rook f1. You move the queen to h4, threatening g2. Now rook g1 is the only move. And after bishop d6, avoiding the bishop to be captured, this position is still so messy. There are so many ideas for black. Bishop e6, long castle, bringing another rook to the h5, maybe playing g2, rook h1. Ah, uh, this position is very complex. So I will not play this for white. And now we get to what I play, what I would suggest to play with white. And it's actually also what I played against the father of the Stafford Gambit, Eric Rosen, in this opening, and I actually won. The video might be out by this point. If it's out, you will find a link in the description. So what I recommend here is after D take C6, don't protect this pawn, but push him baby, E5. Now black has two ways to play, 94 or 95. Knight d4 is tricky because uh, you are attacking f2, but it's not so good. Uh, white just needs to know a bit of moves. d3 is very bad, even if it seems like you're attacking the knight, because there is bishop c5, this knight cannot be taken, because there is the trick, as always. King e2 and bishop g4 winning the queen. Um, and so here you're already in trouble, that pawn is under attack. And bishop e3 allows a nice finish after this. Queen h4 check, g3, you take, and you win a rook. This position is just completely winning for black. Uh, so don't play d3. White shouldn't play d3 and play d4. Then there is one more trick. Queen h4, going for the pawn on f2. Uh, the move g3 here is just wrong because there is knight take g3 with the idea that after pawn take, queen e4 is winning a rook. Uh, but here, the best move is just bishop e3. And now the position for black is mm, not too good. White will just develop the pieces, castle long, and white should be just fine. So what Eric played versus me is the move knight d5. Here you just keep controlling the center with knight d4, c5, challenging the center. You protect in a very natural way with the move c3. Uh, and I think he played something like uh, c6 here with the idea of queen uh, a5. And about this position, I think white should just complete the development, castle, and should be 5. For example, bishop c4, uh, and if queen a5, white could even decide to take on d5, pawn takes, and just castle. But let's not forget that what is a pawn up. It's not winning for white this position, because it's just a pawn down, but it's much better, and white doesn't need to know that much like in the other lines. That's why this is what I play versus the Stafford Gambit. And now let me show you one more way to refute the Stafford Gambit. At move 5, um, we saw that there are two main moves, d3 and knight c3. 
Nice is still playable. We just saw bad things with Nice is three, but also this move is playable. And what you have to do after Bishop c5 is playing the move h3, blocking the knight to go to g4. If h5 here, I think white can just play the move d3, and all the ideas are, like in the other line are not working because queen d4 is followed by bishop e3, and white is winning here. So the new idea for black in this position is not to play h5, but to play the move g5. Which is a very, very funny move. You just want to keep pushing the pawn g4, maybe even g3, and just go for a full in attack. As always in the stuff for Gambit, white needs to be precise. Even if the computer says plus 2, you need to play the right moves. White just go for bishop e2 with idea of castle. Well, you can get a very dangerous position. Queen d4, forcing white to castle, and now g4. And black gets some attack. I would be scared to play this with white. Uh, so what white needs to play here is not bishop e2, but to play the move d3. Always to delay the development of the king's side and go for a queen side castle and development. Now the pawn on g5 is hanging, and so rook g8 is the idea, and you want to go for g4. Bishop e3, trying to exchange pieces, bishop take, pawn take, queen d6, with the idea of going to g3. Queen f3 blocking this idea, g4, attacking the queen, queen f4 trying to exchange the queens, queen e7 saying no, I don't exchange, long castle. Bishop e6, pawn take g4, rook take g4, and we have a position where black is a pawn down, there is some idea, some kind of possible compensation. Uh, I saw a game, a video of Eric Rosen where e1 in this position objectively is better for white, but you can still get a very good result from this position. So this is all you need to know about the stuff for Gambit. As you can see, there are many ways for white to go completely wrong, but there are also so many ways for white to get a very good position, but it's always very tricky and you always need to be very careful. So is the stuff for Gambit still playable in 2022? The answer is yes. I would say just in Blitz, because white needs to be so well prepared in order to review the stuff for Gambit that you can just get still a very sharp, interesting position and have fun. At the end, it just must be fun, right? Hope you enjoyed. If yes, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and see you next time.